well. So without much further ado, Pastor Sam will come up and share the message. Thank you all. All right, let's give it applause one more time. You guys are finished. School is done. School is done, yes? Can I get an amen for that? Amen. Amen. Well, again, school is over. You know what that means for the seniors. If I... If you, don't, if you don't mind, can you rise up from your seats, seniors? Let's give it up for them. They graduated. You finished middle school and high school, so congratulations. If you guys don't mind, still, still, be, up, you know, still be up from your seats. And I'm also going to do this. Also, the newcomer, if you don't mind, Jiho, if you don't mind standing up as well. And also, teacher Christine and teacher Hana, if you don't mind standing up as well. And we're going to do this. Let's all kind of stretch out our arms to any of them, and we're going to pray over them. Amen? Amen. Okay, let's pray over them. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for bringing Jiho here and Sync Youth Worship. We pray that um, you will just also be with her and her family and just keep her safe. And just have her, this time is with you and help this community to welcome her in as well. Father, I pray for the seniors here. Um, they made it. They graduated. Um, some of them may be nervous, but I pray that you would take all those stress and nervousness out of them right now and that just remind them they are loved and that you will never walk away from them. You will walk in this journey with them, even throughout their college career and even moving on with their life. And we even pray for Teacher Hyona. We even pray for Teacher Christine. We thank you for just <laughs> giving them the love to show to the youth, Lord. Thank you for their heart of service to the youth. We pray that whatever they have uh, to do in life, we pray that you may protect them and keep them safe as well. In Jesus' name we all say, amen. Y'all may be seated. Thank you. Let's give it up one more time for them. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so last week, we had an amazing time, right? We had an outdoor worship service, and Pastor John gave a message on First Chapter, oh, First Timothy chapter four, twelve, to remind you that don't look, don't let anybody look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in what? In purity. Now. Today we are going to look at Matthew chapter 8. If you guys have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 to 27. All right, if some of you guys have the Bible app, you guys can bring that out too. I don't mind right now. But turn to Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 to 27. And we're going to do this. You know how we work. You know how we do here. One verse each, okay? I'll start us off. Then you guys. Then the last verse we're going to say in unison. You guys ready? No? No, come on. You guys ready? Where's the energy here? You guys ready? Thumbs up? Thumbs up? Okay, let's read this out. Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 to 27. Then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. He replied, you of little faith, why are you afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and waves, and it was completely calm. Altogether, the men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. So, in this moment, Jesus got into a boat. And I got a picture on the boat, so if you don't mind putting that up. So Jesus got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. But why was he getting into that boat? Well, if we take a closer look at the previous verses, especially in verse 18, Jesus had already given orders to cross to the other side of the lake. After a day of teaching and healing and doing all sorts of miracles, right, Jesus moved away from the crowd and he continued his ministry elsewhere. Now, this decision was not random, guys. It was intentional with a certain purpose. 
one that included teaching his disciples a key lesson about faith and trust. Now, I'll call him JC. You guys know what JC stands for? Jesus Christ. You guys know what JC stands for? Jesus Christ. Christ. Yeah, so when Jesus Christ and his disciples set sail, they were following his direct command, which shows their obedience and willingness to go wherever Jesus Christ led them to. However, as they were taking this journey, guys, suddenly in verse 24, let's look at that. Verse 24 says that a furious storm came up on the lake. Now, how many of you guys had those days where everything is going great, but then boom, one little major, small little minor thing happens to you and it just totally crushes you and just ruins your entire day? Now, let me give you an example. All right, I got an example, so don't worry. Pastor Sam got you. I know a a good amount of you guys play video games. Am I correct? Let me see a nod. Yeah, yeah, I see many nods, right? And it could be anything from Brawl Stars to Valorant or a sports game like FIFA or NBA 2K, which is my favorite, personal favorite. And let's say you are winning every single match, every single game, And then after like your 10th win, you decide, you made that choice to play one more game, and then guess what? You got completely destroyed. You lost. (laughs) I mean, first of all, you broke your winning streak, but it just kills your vibe, right? Just losing something, losing a game. So think about this. His disciples were going through a similar feeling where a smooth journey became a not-so-smooth journey. Rain poured down on them, big waves, hitting a boat, making it rock back and forth, right? Some of you guys have motion sickness, right? Yeah, I know I do. It's terrible. And we can even add that there was thunder and lightning. <sighs> yeah, I can make sound effects there, but you guys are okay with me? You guys, you guys good? Can I get a nod? Yes? Yes, everything's good? Well, everyone... Let's do this for a second. Close your eyes. Seriously, close your eyes. Trust the process. Now, when you close your eyes, now imagine you're in this situation on that boat. Close your eyes. Yeah? You're in that boat. And all of that I've mentioned about heavy rain just pouring onto them, thunder and lightning, boom, boom, ch-ch. And then holding on to anything on the boat as tight as possible so you don't fall out of the boat. All this is happening to you, and then you guys all open your eyes. You see one man in the boat just taking a nice nap, a beauty sleep, right? But not any man. It was who? Come on, guys. Work with me here. It was who? Jesus Jesus Christ. Yes. And then when we read verses 25, let's look that out together. The disciples went to Jesus screaming, Lord, save me. Save us. We're going to drown. Now, I don't know about you, but if someone woke me up all of a sudden when I'm taking my beauty sleep, I'm either going to like, because my reflexes, I'm either going to punch them by accident or I'm going to be in shock of what's going on. It's going to take time to process. Now, that's not what Jesus did. Right? If we continue with verse 26, Jesus replied, let's all say this together in verse 26. You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and waves, and it was completely calm. Right? So again, let's say that that small phrase, you of what? Little faith. Ouch. Ouch. Now, I just want to remind you guys that these were disciples that were sticking by with Jesus, right? These are the same disciples that declared, I will follow you, Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Now, here's the interesting part. If we continue on to verse 27, let's read this out loud again together. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and waves obey him. So out of these five verses, this one caught my attention because what kind of question is this, guys? 
Again, these were Jesus' disciples who continuously saw Jesus performing miracles like healing the sick and casting out demons. So how and why would they ask such a thing? But then, you know what, guys? You know, you know what? Come on, let's all lean in for a second. Come lean in. Lean in. Yeah. I realize that we are similar to Jesus' disciples, right? Amen. Now you can go back to your seat. But <laughs> I realize that we are similar to Jesus' disciples in the story because when everything is going well, we tend to like praise the Lord. Thank you for making our plans work out. Thank you for letting us live another day, and thank you for letting this happen, and we receive that in our life. But then when maybe that one little slip up, or we hit like our own furious storm, we tend to what? We tend to turn away from the Lord. Now before closing, you guys know me well, I brought some bulletin points. And I would like to end it with two bulletin points for what you all can take away from this message. So listen up, okay? You can write it down on your notepad. If you got a physical notepad, just bring out that pencil or pen and write it down. Or if you got a phone, come on, you could type it. Maybe you can message it to yourself. But let's see this. Two points. First point, don't be afraid. All right? Can we say that all together? Don't be afraid. Come on, let's say this out louder. Come on, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Now, fear is Satan's number one weapon. I truly believe that. And Satan will use fear to confuse you in your faith in God, stop or slow you down from your spiritual growth and your relationship with the Lord. And as you can see, it happened in when we're reading the story, right? It was happening to the disciples in that boat. And also that same fear that Satan uses can turn you away from God. Now, what was the first point? Yes. So we're going to point number two. Point number two, maintain trust and follow. Now, I do not mean just saying that you trust God and go along with your life, right? But what I mean is to maintain your trust in God. Throughout your ups and downs in life. Because I promise you, he is walking with you along this journey. Amen? Can I get an amen for that? Yeah. Seniors, you're going out to another world. You're going to go out to college and you're going to live this independent life where you got kind of going away from your parents and you got a lot of responsibilities, right? But I want you to maintain that trust in the Lord and know that he is walking beside you throughout this journey in life. Now, and don't forget, what was the second thing? Maintain trust and what? Follow. Good. Can we say that again? Maintain trust and what? Good. Yes, we don't forget to follow God. Follow by reading his words which are not our spiritual food, guys. And he gives us energy, peace, comfort, and even some love. <laughs> right? And the second thing is, follow by praying daily in community and alone with just you and the Lord. And finally, follow by being obedient to his word where you can share God's love and his teachings, not only with this community, or with your friends at school, with your family members that may not um, came along to meeting Christ, and to this whole world. Amen? So let's pray. Let's all close our eyes, and let's take this moment to pray. And I want to invite the praise team to come up. Let's pray. So dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for just bringing us here together. Uh, God, I just pray that we won't be afraid. That we won't be afraid of what life has in store for us. Well, we should be excited and knowing that our God is walking beside us and is working through our own good as well. And for His good. And we're going to enjoy that. And 
God, I just pray that you will help us to maintain trust in you. Not just saying that we trust in you and then just going out, you know, doing our own thing. Or just saying it by words. Help us to really move by action. That we fully trust in you. And that leads to following you, God. Following you, Father. Help us to be obedient to your word. Help us to listen to you. Help us to continue to praise you and be selfless where we can share other people about Christ. And that we can share the good gospel. Lord, <laughs> as we continue this journey together, whatever that we're going through, God, I just pray. you will continue to remind us that we got our one true God who loves us, who cares for us, who's just ready to give you guys a really huge hug. His arms are wide open for you. And maybe some of you guys are like, no, I'm not ready. Or no, I'm like, God, I don't think I've been doing or obeying you, Father. But I'm going to tell you this. God is continuing to reach out to you. So reach out to him. So at this moment, let me pray. I want to close with this. Can we all repeat after me? Father, Come on, guys. Come on. We're doing this together. We're praying out loud together with one voice. Don't be shy. Father, we love you. We thank you for loving us, for being with us through our ups and downs in life. And God, help us to maintain our trust in you even when dark times come, even when tough times come. And I pray, Lord, that we would just throw up our hands and praise you continuously and forevermore. And at this time, let's all recite, not, not reciting, let's all say the Lord's Prayer. This is how the Lord taught us how to pray. It's not just words. It's not just meaningless words. So let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those our trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen all right now let's rise up to our seats and while we sing this closing song i encourage you guys don't hold back don't turn to you and see what they are doing this is you and the lord where you can worship him freely so it could be like hands wide open it could be maybe just kneeling down and giving your heart to the Lord. But let's really posture ourselves and really sing this out loud together. I really want to hear you guys' voices and I bet you that God wants to hear you guys as well. All right, so let's sing this out together with boldness, with courage. And if you guys are going through something, just let it out too, through worship, through praise. Amen, can we do that? Amen? Amen. Let's sing. So we're just going to do the bridge for um, the stand, and we're just going to sing like once or twice. So um, <clears throat> I just want everyone to just sing it out and just, yeah. Yeah. So I'll stand 
With arms high and heart abandoned In all of the one who gave it all So I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrendered All I am is yours Come on, sing that again I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all but the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul to you, surrender all I am is yours. Sing that out again with our voices. So I'll stand. So I'll stand with arms high Of the one who gave it all So I'll stand with soul, Lord, to you surrender all I am is yours Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you again for uh, just bringing us here safely and keeping us healthy, Lord. And for those who couldn't come and join us, Lord, we pray that uh, you also know that we are there for you and we are praying for you, Father. Uh, help them to know that we are um, just connected to you where you can just heal them as well, Father. We believe that you're a healer. So God, again, at this time, help us to be bold and courageous in praising your name and also sharing your good gospel to this world. And we thank you, Lord. And I pray, Father, throughout this time when we just go and chat with each other in Bible study, Lord, I just pray that you will bless our time and bless our fellowship, Lord. In Jesus' name we all say, amen. All right, that concludes our